So today's lesson is about verb conjugation, the present tense, which is mas, and the negative tense, which is masen. Um, these are the polite conjugations in Japanese, and they're also some of the easiest conjugations to make. This book, you wouldn't believe that it was the easiest conjugation to make because there's just two pages of garbage that are basically impossible to understand, and even I was getting confused and questioning myself. Well, I wasn't really questioning myself. I was questioning why this chapter was allowed into a book made by a reputable publisher and then published for beginners. But anyway, uh, my message for people who are on Genki 1 Lesson 3 is throw away pages 88 and 89 or just like ignore them, scribble on top of them. It doesn't matter. Ignore them. Uh, Dan says, where is everyone watching from? Let us know in the comments. Yes, please do. Sporkfish, Genki-induced ex existential crisis. Yes, I had I had one of those earlier today when I was just looking at it more closely and seeing if I could figure out what was going on there. And I did figure it out, um, but that didn't make me like it anymore. So yes, ignore them, scribble on them, throw them away, doesn't matter. That's what you got to do with those pages. Now, this is where I think they went wrong with those pages. Um, the book generally uses hiragana and kanji, and there's some areas where there is some romaji, which is um, using Roman characters to express Japanese, which is fine, especially in the beginning, I think. But the way they explained conjugation was they made this whole new like system, but based around romaji. And it just got, it got super convoluted and I didn't know what was going up. So they also created these two verb types, do and u verbs, which is, I'm sorry, but those are not the two verb types and it's going to confuse you a lot if you think that that's what the verb types are. The two verb types are not do and u verbs. We will cover what they are a little bit later, but just that's not it. I mean, you could say it is, but it'll just confuse you more. They also rev have you reverse engineering the dictionary form from the polite present conjugation. You know, a lot of books do that. I think Minna no, Nihong Minna no Nihongo also does that. But that is also just really confusing because you never, like, there's some easy rules for conjugation in Japanese. They're actually really easy. And if you just memorize the rules, you can take the dictionary form of any verb and have no problem conjugating it. I promise you, it's really, really straightforward. But what they did was they make you memorize the polite conjugated version of it and then try and reverse engineer the dictionary form. And while the rules are simple going one way from dictionary to the conjugations, going backwards is kind of, you're just gonna make lots of mistakes because there's no like guaranteed way to do it. Yeah, so also memorize verbs as a set was like a thing they were saying there. Like make sure you memorize the dictionary form and the polite form together, which was after they said you should you can conjugate into the dictionary form by doing some kind of magic. It was some kind of magic they were expressing. I didn't get what it was. Anyway, throw away the pages, but that's what was going on in them. So what I think you should do first is what you see on the page right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I found a little something in this silly program. We're gonna mouse pointer his pen. So anyway, what you need to do, it's not fun maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't like memorizing things, but what you need to do is you need to memorize the dictionary form of verbs first. That's what you gotta do. Memorize the dictionary form first and worry about the conjugations later. Well, like when you're learning new verbs, just find what the dictionary form is, memorize that. Uh, don't memorize the conjugations first. That's just going to throw you off. Hit the like button to help this stream get out there. Thank you. Yes, please do. The next thing you need to do to work with verbs in Japanese is memorize the rules based on the verb ending. So all of the rules we're going to go over today, which are pretty straightforward, I promise, they're based on the the last character in the verb, the last hiragana, the last thing. So do, u, gu, that kind of thing. That's what they're all based on. And that's the only thing that ever really changes. So we'll get there. Don't worry. 
It's it's simpler than it sounds. So yeah. So let's just like jump right into it. The Japanese polite present tense is the verb stem, which I'm going to teach you how to make, and mas. Mas is right here. So ma is this character right here. And can I do that? And this is su. Okay. So you take the verb stem, which we're going to learn how to create today, and add mas. And that's it. The ending of Japanese, of the polite conjugation in Japanese, is always the same. In fact, the ending of all conjugations in Japanese are always the same. They never end differently. It's always going to be mas for the polite, masen for the negative, masen deshita for the negative past, and all these things. Like, you don't have to memorize that just yet. We'll get there. But they never change. The ending is always the same. Not like in English, where you have. Like, ED is supposed to be the ending, but then there's like 50 others, depending on the word, and you just have to memorize them all. That's not the case in Japanese. If you memorize a few little rules, like 15 rules, maybe? I don't know. You can conjugate any verb, and you'll see how it works at the end of this lesson, because we're going to try together. So, verb stem plus mas. So, here's the thing. All verbs in Japanese, every single one, ends with an U syllable, like the U sound. Not that character, U but the oo sound, so all of them, without fail, end in oo in their dictionary form. So these are the characters, the hiragana, that will come at the end of verbs. So each hiragana, if you may know, I don't know, maybe you don't know yet, each sort of mora they're called in Japanese, they have a consonant and a vowel sound together, and that's one sound and considered one, like, piece in Japanese, except for the verb, the, um, what is it, the vowel sounds, a, i, u, e, o. Everything else is a consonant with a, i, u, e, o attached to it, or the character n, which is like a, it's like a, it stands alone, it's a special case. But anyway, these are the hiragana you'll see at the end of verbs. If it ends in this, it's probably a verb. So we've got u, ku, su, tsu, Nu, mu, gu, bu, and du. Now I put du at the end because du is the most confusing one. It's the only confusing one. The other ones are really straightforward. Du is just a little bit confusing. And this book makes it even worse. So once again, throw out those pages, rip them out. I don't care. The back of them has some important stuff, but yeah, anyway. So how do you make the verb stem? Because you need the verb stem. And then you add mas, right, to get the po um, the polite present tense, which is what chapter lesson three is all about. So here is the verb to walk, which is aruku. 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 Now, to get the stem, the stem is aruki. Now, how did we get that? You'll notice that the only thing that changed is this character here, ku. It became ki, right? So that is the verb stem of aruku. Now, why is that? Well, I'm going to show you. I've actually got really good news. To get the polite present tense verb, all you have to do is take that u syllable, the sound u, and change it to an e sound. This is the character e, right over here. And then you're done. That's it. So for the last one, if we go back, we have aruku. So we keep the k sound and change u to e so it becomes ki aru ki does that make sense to everyone is anyone completely lost on that that is the rule like if you know that rule you can pretty much conjugate any verb in japanese into its present a uh, polite present tense that's the, that's the main rule besides it's just a few little exceptions that we're going to go over now um I have exceptions written down here. It's, it's not completely accurate. They're not really exceptions. So su, the character, you'd change it to she. And that's not an exception, really. It's just that there is no c sound in Japanese. The e version is just su. So sa, si, sa, shi, su, se, so are the five s sounds, right? So there is no c. So su becomes she. And there is no T, like a T-I, there's none of that doesn't exist in Japanese. So tsu becomes 
chi, right? We've got ta tsu te chi to. It's a, it's a little bit. That, that sound, ta chi tsu te to. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, that's, that's a little bit confusing. But those are the only two characters that change slightly differently, right? Su becomes shi, tsu becomes chi. So here we're going to just jump into some words, some examples, so that you can sort of understand what I'm talking about a little better. And if anyone is lost or has any questions, please stop me. Just say something in the chat and I'll be happy to answer your questions because that's what live streams are so great for. If you are confused, like you don't have to raise your hand or something in class, just spit it out in chat and I will answer to the best of my ability. And there's a native Japanese person sitting right over there. So if I don't know, she probably will. Probably. Maybe, she said. Boom. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, U. The U sound becomes E, right? So we've got the verb to sing right here. We've got to sing, which is utau. So here, what I'm doing here is I've got the kanji version, then the hiragana version, and then the stem, the verb stem, and then the fully conjugated present. Wow, there goes a motorcycle. The fully conjugated polite present tense is right here okay so that's how this all works so we've got utau utau which is a sing so we know what has to change is u what do we change u into we look over here it changes to e so the verb stem is utai utai we just add mas to that and that's it you're done you've conjugated the verb to sing into its present tense so utai mas so that means it's also, the Japanese is a little weird. This can also sort of be the future tense sometimes. So like tomorrow I'm going to sing, Ashita utaimasu. Ashita is tomorrow. Utaimasu is to sing. Yeah, conjugated, right? So, Ashita utaimasu. Or right now, ima. Uh, we're not going to get into that. That's present continuous. Don't worry about that. Anyway, present tense. You can just say, you like, you know, you sing. Okay. So to listen is kiku. So ku becomes ki. So we just take that last character. That's the only thing that matters is the last character in kiku and change it to ki. So now we have kiki. That's the verb stem. All you got to do is add mas. Kiki mas is I listen. Or listen, whatever. That's it. We jump down to to speak, which is hanasu. Su will become shi. So all you got to do is take that last su, turn it into a shi, add mas, and you get hanashimas. That's it. Pretty straightforward, right? Is it straightforward? I don't know. Hopefully it is. Please let me know if it's not. Tsu becomes chi, so we've got to wait as our verb for tsu. This is matsu, which is to wait. So tsu becomes chi, ma chi, that's the verb stem. Machimas. Machimas is to wait. Now it is. Awesome. Great. I'm happy to hear that. New new becomes ni. Now there's only I said this in like three streams and a couple videos, but there's only two new verbs in Japanese. It's shinu and inu. Not inu also means dog, but there's a verb inu. And it also means to die and some other things, but don't worry about that verb because it's not used in modern Japanese at all, as far as I know. The last time it was used, to my knowledge, was in the translation of the title for Gone with the Wind. I don't remember what that title was, but they used Inu for like for that. Yeah, that's the last time I know of it being used. Otherwise, Shinu is to die, and that's the only new verb you're ever going to encounter. Literally ever. I just found out about Inu a couple months ago, and I've been studying Japanese for seven years. And I only found it out because I was teaching people new verbs. So, shinu, nu becomes ni, shini, add mas, shinimas, that's the present tense. I'm gonna die or I die. Shinimas. That's it. Let's clear out all our marks and move on. Now we're on to mu. Mu becomes mi. Our mu verb today is to drink, which is nomu. I need to drink right now. So mu becomes what? Someone tell me. Yuki just told me. Thank you. 
Uh, by the way, if you want to write anything in Japanese or any questions in Japanese in the chat, don't be afraid to use romaji, like Roman characters. I'm completely fine with that. It's not a problem if you can't. A lot of, I know a lot of people can't type in Japanese on their keyboards. Maybe I'll make a video showing you how to do that easily someday. But yeah, just type in romaji and I'll, I should be able to pick it up. But anyway, nomu becomes no meat for the, what is it, for the stem. And you add mas, no mi mas. You seeing a pattern here? It's literally just becoming gu becomes gi, right? Our goo verb today is to hurry, which is isogu. Isogu. Gu becomes gi. And that's, you add mas, isogimas. To hurry. I'm hurrying or I hurry or whatever. Our boo verb, boo becomes b, is asobu, which is to play. Boo becomes b, so asobi. That's our verb stem right here. And you add mas, so it's asobimas. I know going over all of these is probably a little boring, but I, I think you're getting the idea. Now, now this is where it gets just a little bit, a little bit complicated. But don't worry, it's not that bad. Do, in most cases, becomes di. For example, in the verb noru, which is to get on, to get on the train, to get on your bike, jitencha, which is bike jitencha. Ni noru. That's to get on my bike. So no du du becomes di. Nori is the verb stem. Nori mas. Right? Yad mas. That's it. I get on the train. Come to Japan says Nihongo demo dai jobu des. Zehi commento shite kudasai. Please comment. Yes, absolutely. So that's that's a normal do verb, right? Becomes di. And yeah. So Genki 1 presents all of these verbs that we just went over, all of them, as u verbs, which is silly. They're not. They're mu verbs, they're gu verbs, they're bu verbs, they're du verbs. They all change a little bit differently, right? I mean, you just add that e sound to the end, and that's it. That's the only rule. But then they present everything else that's to come as the du verbs. But, but this is the du verbs, right? Du becomes a d. So... It just gets really confusing. And the problem is, the way they present it is going to cause you problems when you try to do other conjugations. You might not have a huge problem when you're doing just the present tense, but when you try and do casual uh, conjugations, or if you're trying to do, I don't know, anything else, literally anything else, you're, you're going to have trouble if you think of them as do and u verbs. So, fifth time I've said this, but just ignore those pages. So, verbs that end in edu and iru are different from regular do verbs, but it's not that bad. There are eight exceptions to this. There are eight verbs in Japanese, which I'll show you later, that end in an edu or an iru sound, but they're treated just like normal do verbs, meaning that they are conjugated, you know, you change do to di, right? So there's eight. I'll show you those later. Every other verb that ends with an e, du, or e, du sound will be conjugated slightly differently. So the e and e can be part of another mora, so another basically hiragana. So just, just like, well, I'll explain here. So in taberu, which is to eat, be, if you look at it in romaji, it's a little bit easier to understand. The be, you've got an e sound here, right? Right there. So that becomes an edu verb because the sounds that the verb ends in is edu, right? So that's what I mean by an edu verb. The, the actual official name for these is ichidan verbs, right? Edu and edu verbs are actually called ichidan verbs, um, not du verbs as Genki insists on. So anyway, so this is important um, because you're going to mess every conjugation that has a du on the end of it if you don't pay attention to if the, the sound that comes before do. So every other verb in Japanese, you don't care what comes before the last character. Ku, bu, wh whatever comes before it, like it's important, but you don't need to pay attention to it. If the verb ends in do, you need to check the character that came before, the sound that came before. And if it's e or e, you're going to do this. You just cut the do off. 
You don't have to change it to anything. You don't have to do anything special. You just get rid of it and add moss. That's it. So it's actually really easy. Like there's nothing special, nothing really to remember. You just get rid of it. You don't need that do. You cut it off and add mas. So taberu, which is to eat, becomes tabe. That's the new stem. That is the stem. Is just tabe. You just get rid of do. No do, thank you. And add mas. Tabe mas. Right? I'm gonna eat. Actually, I already ate. So I'm not gonna eat. But if I were to eat, I'd say tabe mas. Or if someone in chat was to offer me like a, a Kit Kat or something, I'd say, ah, oh, tabemas, I will eat that. Yeah, so that's it. Iru eru, not a big, not a big deal, right? So here are three other examples using verbs that are in this chapter of Genki. We've got miru, which is to look. The verb stem of miru is just mi. You cut off the ru, boom boom, it becomes mi mas. To sleep, nedu, you just cut off the ru, so the stem is ne, add mas, ne mas. I offer you a virtual Kit Kat. Tabe mas. See how you do that? Good stuff. Thanks, Dan. The next verb is to wake up or to get up, just to stand, you know, get up from a lying position. It's not necessarily wake up, but you can also say it when you do wake up. So anyway, that's okiru. You just cut that do. Ooh, fun. The stem is oki, and the verb becomes okimas. Right? And that's it. Here are the eight exceptions. So, the bad news, I don't know. It's If you're learning a language, you've probably gotten used to the fact that you're going to have to memorize some stuff. I think Japanese, as far as like exceptions go, you're going to have to memorize the least of almost any language I've ever run into. I know when I was learning Spanish, there was just all these exceptions. And even in English, there's all these silly exceptions. Sometimes I, you know, I make mistakes now even with conjugations. And in England, the conjugations are different sometimes for the past tense than in American English. Any other language is a mess. Japanese has very few exceptions. So here's eight that you just need to memorize. So that is hairu, which is to enter. Check that out. Ends in iru, right? Excuse me. <laughs> We've got hashiru, which is to run. See, shi, it ends in an e sound, so it's an iru verb, hashiru. But remember, these are exceptions. So you will not conjugate them by cutting off the ru. That's not how you conjugate them. You will conjugate these like a normal ru verb. So I don't have it written here. But to conjugate hairu into its present polite form, you just put mas, so ru becomes a d, just like a normal one, right? Hashiru, which is to run, becomes hashirimasu. Hashirimasu. Iru, which is to need something, um, becomes irimasu, right? I need, I don't know. Kitto katto irimasu. Motto kitto katto irimasu. I need more Kit Kats, please. <laughs> Kairu, which is to go home. Look at that. It looks like an edu verb, right? You, you definitely were going to want to conjugate this as kaimas, but kaimas is to buy. It's not to go home. If you want to conjugate kairu to go home into its present tense, you need to say kairimas. Ohio. Good morning, Nick. Welcome to the stream. We've just gone over um, a better way to look at conjugations than what Genki presents you. Uh, hopefully they will help you later when you catch up to us in lesson three. Um, yeah. So the next exception, which once again, you just have to memorize all of these is kagiru, which is to limit. Um, it's not a beginner verb, so you're probably not going to be using it anytime too soon. But I do use it from time to time, so it's worth learning. Kagiru becomes kagirimas. It's not kagimas. Kagirimas is what you do. Kiru is to cut, becomes kirimas. Kirimas. Shaberu is to speak, so that becomes shaberimas. And shiru to know. What? Shiteru? Shirimas? Shirima? I've never said shirimas in my entire life. 
I don't think you really say that much, but it's how you would conjugate it if you were so inclined. So those are eight exceptions to the iru edu rule, or the these are eight do iru edu verbs that are not ichidan verbs. Okay, so yeah, you just have to memorize them: hairu, hashiru, iru, kairu, kagiru, kiru, shaberu, shiru. You memorize those eight. Any other iru edu verb will be conjugated by, if we look back here, cutting off the du, adding mas. That's it. And um, these are also exceptions in other types of conjugations. So it's definitely worth memorizing that these are the exceptions to the iru edu rule. All right, so Japanese has only two irregular verbs. That's it. It's such a wonderful thing. Once again, I was saying earlier in Spanish English, there's like, there's so many irregular words and verbs and uh, and this and that. Only two. That's it in Japanese. And not only are there only two, they're so common and you will use them so much that it won't even cause you trouble, at least not after the very beginning. So those two irregular verbs are to come, which is kuru. We've got kuru right here. And to do, which is suru. So if you look at this, it's kuru. You would expect it to be conjugated as mas, right? I mean, that's what you'd expect. But that is not the case. It's wrong. Boop, boop. If you look at suru, it's a do verb, normal do. It's not iru edu. So you, you do, would ex you would expect. I do that at least once per stream. Sorry. You would expect it to be conjugated as sudimas. I promise you, that is not correct. Do you love my handwriting with a mouse or what? It's beautiful. No, it's wrong. It's terrible, Andy. This is why they're irregular verbs. They're conjugated slightly differently. Kuru becomes kimas. Suru becomes shimas. And these two are the other two that you have to memorize, right? You've got the eight exceptions, and you've got these two. That's all you need to memorize, those ten things. Then you memorize the nine ways the endings change. Actually, just one. If we go back to these, there's only one thing you need to memorize for godan verbs, which is what, what this type of verb is. Um, just the one thing. Just the E sound in the last character. <laughs> Or the U sound in the last character changes to an E sound. That's it. That's the only rule. So if you memorize these 11 things, you will be able to conjugate any verb in the Japanese language, literally any single one, any, anyone, into its present tense. Right? You're good to go. And not only that, but you will be able to conjugate any verb in the Japanese language into its negative polite tense as well. Negative is like not... It's just like adding not to the verb, so I'm not going to eat. So we take the verb stem, which we've already learned, and add ma sen. Not mas, ma sen. And then it becomes negative. And it's exactly the same as the present tense. We just I'm just going to run through these. Utao to sing. Once again, u becomes i. You got the stem, and you just add ma sen. So utaimasen. Ku becomes ki, kiki, ma sen. Su becomes shi. Hanashi masen. Tsu becomes chi. Machi. Machi masen. Second time today. Machi masen. Shinu becomes shini masen. Right? So, same pattern as before. You just add masen to get the negative. So, just to explain quickly what the negative is in case anyone is confused, the negative is so let's use nomu right here, which is to drink. Nomu becomes nomi for the stem. Nomi masen. So if someone says to me, hey Andy, do you want to drink this? Or are you going to drink this? That's actually a better question. Are you going to drink this? Ne, ne, Andy. Nomu or nomi ka? I would say if I'm not going to drink it, nomi masen. So I'm not going to drink it or I don't drink it. Nomi masen. So yeah. It's just the uh, op opposite of the positive present tense. Gu, so isogu becomes isogi. That's the stem. Isogimasen. Bu becomes bi. Asobimasen. 
do once again we've got the same exceptions here as in uh, as before do becomes the d for most do verbs so no do becomes no di masen so we jump in just ahead if, if anyone wants me to slow down and has any questions about the negative please let me know um, it's so similar to the positive that if you were here during that part there's literally nothing new so i'm just going to keep blazing through it unless anyone has any questions but for the idu and edu endings, ending verbs like before, taberu, miru, nedu, okiru, like that, you do the same thing as we did with the present positive. So you just cut the du, you're left with mi for miru, that's the stem, and you add masen, mi masen, I don't look, or I won't look. Nedu, nedu, you cut the du, ne masen, I'm not sleeping. I'm not going to sleep. To get up or to wake up, oki, and this is what I'm going to be saying tomorrow morning, okimasen. You just cut the do, becomes oki, okimasen, right? That's it for you to do verbs. For the the only exception, or the only uh, irregular verbs in Japanese again, we've got kuru and suru. Just like the present, we had kimas, right? So for the negative, we have kimasen. And for the negative of sudo, we have shimasen. I won't do it or I don't do it. Right? And that's it. That's the negative. So, Yuki says, brr, wakarimasen. You don't understand? <laughs> okimasen. Ah, yes. I'm not going to wake up either. Okimasen. <laughs> Den is also uh, okimasen. How do, ah, ah, she's trying to spell out my blah, 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 that. I have no idea. How would you spell that? How would you spell that? I have no idea. I don't even, I don't even like intend to do it. It just comes out. <laughs> anyway. So these are going to be the practice problems which I've created. They're pretty straightforward. Basically what I want you to do, whether it's in chat or the Discord is up, I'm in voice chat so I can hear you guys if you want to jump in there. If anyone wants to jump in and just try one, that would be awesome. Um, if not, try and answer in the chat. What you have to do is first, you tell me what the stem is. So I'll do the first one. So iku, which is to come. Ku becomes, of course, ki. So that's the stem, iki. That's the stem. That's the first answer. And then I'm going to do, for all of these, we're doing the present. But you can do the present or the negative. I'm going to add mas, iki. Ikimas, right? Ikimas, that's the answer. So to come, iku becomes ikimas. Shigoto ni ikimasen. Yuki says she's not going to work. I wish. Anyway, check out the Discord, says Dan. Yeah, feel free to jump in there. I don't think anyone's jumping in there right now. Zettai ni. Ashita wa okimasen, zettai ni. Yuki says tomorrow morning she's not waking up. Definitely not waking up. It's not true. I'll be waking her up. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our first verb, if anyone wants to try in the chat, is fine. Once again, you can use romaji. So I'll just type in the example of what I said before. No, uh, I'm not going to give it away. Ikimasu is what my last answer was. You can type it like that or use hiragana. Anything is fine. First one in chat with the right answer gets a virtual Kit Kat. Yes, first one in chat to answer gets a virtual Kit Kat. So, what is the <laughs> the stem for Nomu? The mas stem for Nomu is five, four, three, two, ten. Yuki says I'm too fast. I think is she trying to answer? I don't know. I'll give everyone a few more seconds, um, and then I'll show the answer. So, nomu becomes no Dan answer. <laughs> Nick, not sure. Oh, sporkfish, nomi. Correct, nomi. And oh, that's okay, Nick. You weren't actually, I don't think you were here yet for that part. Basically, I'll just quickly go over it again. So we've got 
mu is the ending of no mu, right? So every verb ends in an u sound. So you just change that u sound to an e sound, and you've got the stem. So in no m mu, you change the u to an e, and you get no m e, no mi. That's the stem. And all you have to do to get the present tense is add masu to that. So if we go back really quick to the beginning. Oh, that's going to take a while. Uh, aru, yeah. The u syllable becomes e, right? So u becomes e, utau becomes utai, mas. Ku becomes ki, ki, ku becomes ki, ki. Masu. So that's that's the basics of it. Let me just skip right to the end. Don't look too closely, guys. You're going to see the answers. <laughs> Jump right into here. And that's that's the basics of it. Uh, yeah, you get a Kit Kat Sporkfish, too. For answering, nomu. Nomu becomes nomi. You add mas, and that is the present tense. Nomi masen would be the negative. Next one, we've got Yomu, which is to read. Now, can't beat, can't beat the original. Nice. Uh, here's a virtual Kit Kat. <laughs> I think we have some somewhere, but no originals. Um, Dan, send him some virtual Kit Kats. Some virtual Kit Kat love. So all the verbs up until now are verbs from, from Genki. So if you memorize those verbs in there, you should be able to do these eventually. So Yomu. Once again, it's the same as nomu, so the stem for yomu would be, I'll give everyone 10 seconds, and I'll just sit here staring nicely at the camera, counting down like this. This time, you get a virtual, I don't know, banana. Oh! Yomimasu. That is correct, yeah. That is the conjugation, so the stem is yomi. And the conjugation is yomimas. Excellent. Nick, you get a virtual, what did I say, banana? I think I said banana. You can have a Kit Kat too. Boom. The virtual banana, I did say banana. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Next, I'm just going to look around. A virtual cup of ramen. All right, our next verb is neru, which is to sleep. Banana. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Super exciting. Anyway. Nedu becomes, so nedu, remember, this is this is a little tricky. Nedu, it ends in an, let's get the pen out. Edu, right? It's an edu verb. So this is the one that is a little bit different. I can tell you, I'll give you a hint here, that it's not nedimas. It's not. Oh, you could give out the banana. Sweet. I wonder what's next. Ne, yep, that's the stem. Correct. The stem is ne. So the full verb is... Yeah, everyone's good. She just said everyone's perfect at this. Yes. So you can do the present or the past. You just add mas, and it becomes ne mas. You win a virtual bowl of ramen. Sportfish 22. Woohoo! All right, our next one. We're going to get into some more difficult ones because what I want you guys to see here is that... It doesn't matter if you even know the verb or what it means. You can conjugate it if you know these simple little rules um, without fail. And there's no exceptions except for the ones, the 10 that I went over. That's it. Those are the only exceptions to these rules. So I'm going to throw in some really tough ones that one, of, one or two of them I didn't even know until today. That's how difficult they are. But you will be able to conjugate them, I promise you. So this is hashiru. And remember, it's an exception to the iru rule. So that's my hint, hashiru. This is one of the eight exceptions. Oh, there's actually a chocolate bar, nice. So hashiru, the stem is 10, nine, eight, the buzzer, five, four, three, two, all right, so the answer is, remember, if we have a, if we have an iru ver, oh, hashiri, yes, it is, it's hashiri, that is correct. You win another bowl of ramen, I guess. Hashiru becomes, yes, hashiri. 
So it's an exception to the idu rule, which means you conjugate it the same as a regular do verb. Remember, there's eight exceptions. Hashirimasu. So yes, Sporkfish wins again. Good job. Our next verb is to sit. Now this one, we're moving away from some of the verbs that are in this chapter of Genki. I'm sure they show up later in the book, but we're going to start moving into ones you definitely probably don't know, but I guarantee you, you can conjugate them. So, suaru, which is to sit. Suaru. So it's just a normal do verb. So this one becomes... Anyone jump in whenever you're ready? Sua. I always forget that this is slightly delayed, um, just so that the quality goes up a little bit. So there may be a lot of blank space in here. Su ah, close, and I understand why you want to do that, but. The only, the only character that will ever change in a verb will be the last character. So the final character is the only one that you'll ever change. You'll never change if there's... So in this case, there's two characters at the end, right? You've got wa and du. So you'll never touch the character before du. Only ever when you're conjugating will you touch the last one. So only du will change. Du will change in some way. But it's a good guess. Wa is is in the wa is in the same group, I guess. Wa o and yeah. But there's no verbs from that. So u would become e, right? So just to give it away, we've got it'll become suari, right? So du is the last character and you just change that it's a normal du verb, which becomes di. Good guess. I jumped into it. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> so, the next verb is to give. Watas. So, this is a very common verb, but it doesn't show up in Genki yet. So, it's another one that you probably don't know yet. You might not know yet. But remember, we just changed the last character to its E sound. And if you remember, there's no such sound as C in Japanese. So, watasu becomes... Ooh, I see T coming. Yay. All right. Watashimasu. Correct. Watashimasu. Watashimasu is the conjugation of watasu, which is to give. Good job, Sporkfish. Yep. So, su, remember, becomes shi because there's no C sound in, in Japanese. That, there it just isn't. So the E sounding s, uh, I don't even know what you call that, those groups. Sasi, sashi, suse, so is she, <clears throat> the one with an E at the end, right? So this is, now we're going to get into a couple that are probably not even in Genki. All right, this one is to wrap up. So it's tsutsumu, very difficult to say, tsutsumu. So this is to wrap a present or to wrap up literally anything just to wrap something so tsutsumu. it's a mu verb there's nothing weird about it so remember only mu will change gonna finally be able to knock out these bunpo bunpro questions yes man you should be able to kick their butt now i hope remember the only ones that'll probably that might you know trip you up a little bit in the beginning are going to be the idu and edu verbs otherwise they're all the same like this so, tsutsumu becomes achiku, watashimasu. Ah, she's giving you a banana. <laughs> Thank you, Yuki. <laughs> I'm so happy that there's emo emoji. Is it emoji? Emoji in chat. Emo emoji in Japanese. Anyway, yes. So, mu, remember, the. there's nothing weird about this one. It just becomes... I'll give three more seconds. Three, two, one. All right. It becomes tsutsumi. Tsutsumimasu, which is to wrap. All right. Next, we're jumping into another one that 
probably isn't going to show up in Genki. It, may, it might, but it's actually pretty useful if you if you live in Japan or if you work with kids or or just in daily life. To tie something is is actually a very important verb, and it took me a while to learn this one. I think I don't know why it took me quite a while. I think, but anyway, it's musubu, which is to tie, to tie your shoelaces, whatever. It doesn't matter. Musubu. So bu. Presento tsutsumimasu. I wrap a president. I wrap a. <laughs> yep. Wrap that president up and send him away is what she's saying, I guess. <laughs> she's laughing her ass off over here. Almost spit out tea. Yeah, to wrap a present. Presento tsutsumimasu. <laughs> so, musubu. I'm going to just start jumping through these. I think you guys have the idea. Um. Bu is gonna be come unless oh you got it musubimas you win another banana awesome musubimas exactly so you just change that b consonant add an e instead of an u you got musubimas perfect now this one I didn't know until today and I've been studying Japanese for a very long time but for some reason I just I just didn't know this word and it is hodoku which is the opposite of to tie. It's to untie, or so if you want someone to untie their shoes, hodoku is the dictionary form. Why does Genki make this so hard? I know, I know, Sporkfish. That that is my. That's why I'm doing this. That is why I'm doing this stream because I read that chapter. Um, someone, one of the people in the Discord actually, her name is Courtney. She actually sent me some messages or some tweets. She didn't understand some of these things that were happening in Genki. So I went and take, took a look at the book because I had gotten it. I planned on doing a little something on it at some point. And I looked at this chapter and I couldn't figure out what it was saying. Like, I think I've read this these first two pages in lesson three at least five times, like every word of it. And I still don't know, besides of the, the explanation I gave, I gave at the beginning, that's the only thing I could work out those reasons I gave at the beginning of the lesson. Um, but I, I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know who approved it or thought that it was going to work. Like, everything else in the book is actually pretty good. Like, they give pretty good advice. They'll, they'll, they don't hide the fact that, like, for example, particles, in conversation, you generally don't use them. You drop them a lot. Like, they say stuff like that. And not many textbooks come out and say, hey, we're teaching this grammar, but you're probably never going to use it in conversation. So I, I, like, really respect the book for parts like that. But this part, what were they thinking? Anyway, hodoku. So it's a ku verb. Ku becomes... Anyone? Ah. Ku becomes... Once again, there's nothing weird about this one. Uh, we already covered all the idu, edu verbs. It's just going to be a normal, a normal one. So you'll see, you should be able to see from this that like, yeah. Ah, oh, Dan did it. All right. Hodoki. <laughs> Hodokimasu. Yuki's jumping in. All right. Yeah. You can literally, you can conjugate any verb you want in, that you've never heard of. Doesn't matter. Sneaking in for a point. Give him a banana, Yuki. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you know the verb or not. If you know this one rule, you can conjugate anything. Kobosu. I'm just going to jump right through this one. Kobosu is to spill. I just want to point out that um, the last two verbs, uh, hodoku, generally you don't use the kanji for this one. So you don't have to go out of your way. Boom. Ba Boom. Boom life. Sneaking in for a point. <laughs> You generally don't have to use the kanji for this one. Um, generally, it will be written in hiragana. And that's the same with this crazy kanji here. Boom, boom, boom. Am I doing this right? Let's see. Woo. Yeah. Um, you will never write this kanji unless you're doing it to practice. Oh, no, I did it. Oh, you saw what it was. Anyway, kobosu is generally written in hiragana. And su, you already saw it, so I'm just going to throw it out there, becomes, of course, shi. Koboshi mas. So now you can, you can convert it. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Mite kurete arigato.
Thank you for watching. I hope that you understand a little more if, if you're on Lesson 3 in Genki and you're lost. Hopefully this sort of helps you not be lost anymore. Um, I tried to make it as simple as possible. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you're watching this later, like after the fact, and it's not live on stream anymore, and you have questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm on there way too much, um, and I'm always happy to answer questions, um, whether it's just a tweet, DM, or a comment. More than happy to help um, because I'm just so disappointed that such an, a popular book, like really, really, really popular book has such a terrible chapter on such an important subject. So hope that helped. If you are on the stream right now and you joined in the middle and missed the whole explanation of how to do this stuff and just watch through these examples and are still a little lost, the only thing I can say is you're going to have to go back to the beginning and watch those over again. Sorry about that. Um, you know, it took me quite a while. What time is it? It took me almost an hour to go all over this stuff. Wow, that was a long time. So thanks for sticking it out with me. Um, I wasn't sure how long this was going to take, so I was going to go and read a an article and just sort of go through it and explain some of it that was going on in um, NewsWeb Easy, which is a... It's a really good resource when you're learning Japanese. I mean, it's a little bit above the level of Genki 1, but I may do something like this on a different stream. So a different night, I'm probably going to maybe, I don't know, I did a poll um, on Twitter to see if anyone would be interested. Some people were. Uh, let's see, six votes, five people said, yeah, sure. One person said, ew, no, so rude. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so I may do a stream on sort of going through some recent news articles on Genki Web Easy or News Web Easy, and yeah, just explaining the grammar and the words and the conjugations and whatnot little by little. So that's something I may do at some point. I haven't figured out the date yet. If anyone has any suggestions, please let me know in the comments for dates or times or whatever, and I'll see what I can do. Sporkfish says, "Do it." Yeah, I think I will. So. I just have to pick a day. i um, not positive when it will be yet. Probably midweek, I'm guessing. Uh, I could do Saturdays, but then that would be my entire weekend. And I couldn't probably consistently do Saturdays. So it'll probably be a weekday. But anyway, that's what's going to be coming up in other streams here on Token Yandy. Uh, make sure you hit the like button if the, you enjoyed this or it helped you out. Uh, hit the subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And follow me on Twitter. So we can, you know, hang out during the week. Also, Discord, if you want to try these, like today, um, you guys all tried to answer some of the questions in in the chat, which is absolutely fine. But if you ever want to practice speaking, I always say if you want to learn to speak Japanese, you got to speak it. Um, if you want to practice speaking, we've got the Discord. You can speak live on stream or off stream. It doesn't matter um, in the chat. Um, Yuki, it's her first time ever on Discord. And she wants people to talk to. She's ans she answers questions like in real detail um, on there. She's actually really good at explaining Japanese um, in simple English so so people can understand. Uh, so yeah, so go hang out with uh, myself and her and everyone else in there on the Discord if you get a chance. And so yeah, thank you to Sporkfish. Thank you to Nick for hanging out. Thank you to Dan for being my mod as always. And for anyone else who is watching who hasn't been in the chat. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you next time. Have a great Sunday. I think it's Sunday morning for you guys in America. And have a great Sunday night for everyone over here in Japan. There is a link to a YouTube video. I'm imagining, I'm hoping that that is our new video. Yes, please watch our new video. Oh my god, am I streaming my... I totally am. Just streaming my little face in the corner. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I just had my little face in the corner of a blank screen for like 10 minutes. Anyway, um, yeah, hit that link. Check out our new video of the vending machine race. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Have a good one, guys. Oh, where's my button? Have a good night. Boom, life.